Welcome to Reman Fab Bank. My name is Carl. This past summer, I purchased a Rong Fu 31 Central Machinery Round Column Milling Machine that I've made a few modifications that some of you may be interested in. First modification didn't in involve the machine at all, but was the fabrication of this light. This machine kind of resides in a dark corner of my shop, and the light really makes it nice to be able to see what I'm doing. The light itself is a uh, Walmart LED light, uh, hyper tough, that I put a fiber a fluorescent light diffuser on to kind of cut down on some of the harshness. I like this light because it's a cool light. It doesn't get hot working underneath it, and it casts a lot of light on the dark corner of my shop. The most impressive part that I bought about three weeks ago is this DRO. I got it on either on eBay or Amazon, one of the two, and got it all installed, and I really like it. Uh, it makes jobs like putting a hole in the exact center of a piece of metal much easier than what it used to be. This, you can indicate on both sides, it'll put it right exactly in half where you need it to. Also, a feature that I've learned to use that I really like is being able to cut a cope into a piece of square tubing that be, would be welded on a piece of pipe. This is inch and a half square tubing and it's being welded onto a piece of two inch pipe. Before this machine, there was a lot of messing around with an angle grinder and getting it all squared up. This works a lot nicer. It's basically one and done, clean the edges up, weld it onto the piece of pipe, and you're done. The X axis power feed is uh, the power source for this is a wheelchair motor that I purchased from the Surplus Center in Lincoln, Nebraska. www.surpluscenter.com. Really works nice. Probably one of the best features of it is uh, the ability to easily engage and disengage the power feed. So right now, that's the disengage position. This is the engage position. See how easy that is? The manual, I retain the manual crank on this side because it's sometimes it's nicer to use this to position the table where you want. The power source for the wheelchair motor is a power supply I purchased off Amazon. It's a 20 amp, 28 volt power supply. I don't need all 28 volts, but the power supply seems to work pretty well. I did take it apart and I moved the potentiometer up to this little box so it's easier to get to to control the speed. This green button back here is a jog button and that overrides this potentiometer and allows the motor to run at almost full speed to quickly move the table back and forth between fixture changes or whatever you're doing. This switch here controls the direction of the motor or direction of the table. So right now the table is moving to the left. If I push the little green jog button See, we're running at, oh, about 20 volts, something like that, and it allows the table to move quickly. Change the direction of the table movement, put the switch the other way, then if you hit the green button, it allows the table to jog. Works really nice. I really like that feature. It's pretty mind-numbingly mind boring, if I could even talk, to stand here and crank this handle and watch the milling cutter mill something on the on the milling machine. This is the Z axis, and this is probably one of the more challenging pieces to put in for the DRO install. The first issue I had was this quill would move, would rotate back and forth slightly, which on a manual milling machine, that's no big deal. Part of the problem was they had a uh, 3 8 bolt that screwed in that had a 3 16 pin on it. This That pin engaged in a quarter inch groove in the mill column. Well, there's enough slop in there that it will allow this to move. Part of the DRO installation, the relationship between the reader and the encoder cannot change. It, there can't be a bunch of slop having this move around. It caused great issues with accuracy. So I drilled this hole out to a half inch, uh, got a piece of half inch drill roll, mold a quarter, milled a quarter inch tang on the end of it, and now it, it fully engages in this quarter inch groove, and that that took out 99% of the slop. This little quarter inch bolt is kind of a grub screw to, that holds everything tight in there. The other modification I made is I fabricated this brass bushing that allows this piece of 3 8 uh, drill 
rod slide up and down easily but but still be rigid so now when the uh, reader is moved up and down that relationship is pretty stable and that reader seems to be pretty accurate the y-axis is located down here basically I took a couple pieces of angle iron and welded here and here welded them to another piece of angle iron that that y-axis encoder is bolted to the y-axis reader is bolted to the base so when the, the uh, I move the table back and forth you can you can see that the that the encoder is moving but the reader is stationary that has proved to be very stable it works very well I saw some guys that were putting basically the bolting the encoder to the base and then having the reader bolted to the piece that moves I didn't like that because I could see nothing but swarf getting down into that encoder and causing problems this little cover keeps everything covered up nicely and I've had zero issues with that in the three weeks I've been running it the x-axis is pretty standard it's bolted to the back of the table there's the there's the reader that's bolted to the stationary part of the table works quite well this little bolt I have laying right here keeps keeps me from moving the y-axis into the column and crashing the the uh, encoder onto the column I'm gonna do that a little bit better one of these days when I get some time and I remember uh, all in all I think that's about all of the modifications that I did if you have any questions or comments I will try and keep an eye on them on the YouTube and I'll try and answer what I can so thank you for watching